Welcome back to Arsenal News TV and today we're going to look at full things spotted in Arsenal training. Arsenal will face Slavia Prague at the Emirates Stadium and it will be a massive game for the Gunners as this is their only chance of getting European football next season by trying to qualify through every stage and win the Europa League because they look very far away from the Premier League and have any chance of making it into the European places so this is their only hope of getting a Champions League spot. So it looks like the first thing on the list is Bukayo Saka back in training and it looks like it's a huge boost for the Gunners because when it comes to Bukayo Saka he is someone that the Gunners are very reliant upon because his goal attributions his assists he's someone that changes this dynamic of the team he changes the fluidity and he is someone that can offer a lot on that right hand side of the attack but it is very keen to see if Miklos Setsa plays Bukayo Saka on the right winger role where he has been playing for the past few games or would he refer him back to a left back position or maybe will Miklos Setsa change to a 3-4-3 system and play Bukayo Saka in the left wing back role and we'll have to wait and see what happens but at the end of the day with the likes of Kieran Tierney missing being a huge huge miss for the Gunners the likes of Bukayo Saka back in training is a huge plus points for the Gunners because Bukayo Saka can offer a lot when it comes going forward and he's someone that the Gunners have started to rely heavily on at 19 years old. I think there's a lot of burden on a young player like Bukayo Saka but at the end of the day you have to be a generational talent as we saw with Kylian Mbappe versus Bayern Munich. You see even at a young age he's carrying that team forward and players such as Neymar are looking up to Kylian Mbappe. So we have to do the same with Bukayo Saka even at a young age, only young age you will know if someone is a generational talent and I really do see in Bukayo Saka but hopefully he can remain injury free hopefully he doesn't become an another Jack Wilshere as we started to see with maybe Kieran Tierney but hopefully he doesn't become another Jack, uh, Jack Wilshere and hopefully he has the ability to keep going forward keep striving in different positions and his versatility is something that will be very key for Mikel Arteta with the likes of Mate and now is not even in the team so Bukayo Saka may feature in that position so the next thing on the list is Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang his all smiles and Pierre Aubameyang faced a lot of criticism in the game versus Liverpool because he was shocking and he was abysmal his performance. And the one thing I really noticed about Pierre Aubameyang of recent is the fact that he's gone a bit too lazy. Before, even if he wasn't getting goals, he would run more. He would try to make an impact, but now. He looks like he isn't putting 100% effort. He's playing at a 70% or 60% effort and he's not making the runs at certain occasions. And that's something very clearly spotted is if you're going to defend, if McLaughlin is saying that you have to defend as a five and you have to drop back, then Pierre Ricabami has to do the defending duties well as well. But he's bit part here, bit part there. So Pierre Ricabami has a big opportunity to play versus Slavia Prague and put all that to bed and have an opportunity to score and get back into the Arsenal fans favour and try to get back into the goal scoring streak and try to be back to that prolific striker he always was known to be and the way he carried us pretty much to win the FA Cup final so hopefully Pierre Mkabami can do this in the game versus Slavia Prague and regain some form of confidence from somewhere because even you saw in the game against Gabon he had a goal and an assist so he has the ability but he's just struggling in this Arsenal awesome team at the moment and it depends on Mikel Arteta if he's able to unlock the full potential of Pierre Mkabami so we have to wait and see if Pierre Mkabami will even start because it looks like the Arsenal awesome fans are uh, had enough of him at the moment and many people are questioning his captaincy many players are questioning his ability on the ball and many players are even saying sell him in the transfer market so we have to wait and see if Arsenal and especially Miklos Setsa will play Pierre Aubameyang this game so the next thing on the list is Granit Xhaka back in training Likewise, I like Bukayo Saka being back in training and being a huge plus point for Big Claude Sessa because Mick, um, Bukayo Saka can play in a range of number of different positions. He can play in the left wing, he can play in the right wing, he can play in the left wing back row, he can even play in the left back row where he bursts onto the scenes. So the likes of Granite Xhaka being back in the team is a huge plus point as well in my opinion because if you look at our midfielders, we got Granit Xhaka, we've got El Nenny just behind him, we've got Thomas Partey and we've got Danny Ceballos. The likes of Joe Willock out on loan, um, other players that can fit in that position, we really do not have anyone. Maybe we can switch the formation and play Emil smith and Martin Odegaard with two number eights. But right now, the way Mikel Arteta is playing the system, the way he wants to play this 4-2-3-1 formation, we need two good defensive midfielders, attacking midfielders, but we need really two good number sixes playing together. And that's what Granit Xhaka offers, in my opinion. But we saw his stability and 
technique he offers when it comes to the ball and he offers some stability as I keep mentioning when it comes to Granit Xhaka even though he might not be the best on the ball he might not be the quickest person he might not have the best physicality but he has his mistakes here and there but we really have a good player in my opinion when you look at the other players and the thing I keep coming point coming to is the summer transfer window and Mikel Arteta keeps saying that it's going to be a huge summer overhaul so hopefully the Connors are going to get some new midfielders in because Granit Xhaka is a decent midfielder I don't know if he can reach the heights that we all expect him to but we have to wait and see if he can really go to the level that I expect of Granit Xhaka but for right now he's someone that we have to start every game alongside Thomas Partey because our midfield is shocking and the final thing on the list is Miguel Aziz is all smiles. And speaking of the midfielders, I thought we were miles to talk about Miguel Aziz because our midfield is very shocking in my opinion. Or apart from Thomas Partey and maybe Granite Xhaka, El Neni is a bit part player. He's always going to be a squad player in my opinion. And the likes of Danny Ceballos, he has been shocking. In the game versus Liverpool, he was pretty much done nothing. I think he made um, Thomas Partey play the midfield by himself. So... We have a lot of things to work on and I think Miguel Z is being put in with a lot of Haylanders back into the squad in training as well. That's good only for Miguel Aziz's development. He can turn to be the next Bukayo Sako, the next Emil smith Rowe, and he has the opportunity. And you see he's all smiles here, so he must have done something cheeky or he must have done a really good goal. Or he must have shown his ability on the ball because we all know that Miguel Aziz has the ability at a young age, but he has to now show it on the big stage and hopefully he can. And he may get a feature maybe in the last 10 minutes or something if... Mikel Arteta really, really, really wants the opportunity for Miguel Aziz. If he has really impressed him, as you can even see in this picture, Pierre Mikabami is impressed by his skill and flair. So, he might get the opportunity, but we have to wait and see. But I think Miguel Aziz, maybe just in the Europa League, subs maybe, but he's not probably going to get the opportunity. But at the end of the day, it's all for his development. And if he starts to show good performances, he's someone that you can slot right into the midfield because we've got the likes of Gwen Duzzi and Lucas Torreira. We don't even know their futures. Lucas Torreira wants to go back to Boca Juniors. Uh, Matteo Guendouzi is in a sticky situation, so we have to wait and see if Miguel Aziz might be the future in midfield. So we have to wait and see how Mikel Arteta has this plan, and hopefully it's a huge game for the Gunners, and hopefully they know, because I want a victory in this game and a victory in the second leg as well, and qualify to the semi-final. But other than that, guys, remain blessed. Stay tuned for the next video, and peace.